Hello and welcome to my morning note. If there is one risk out there that keeps macro strategists awake at night, it's the possibility of a disorderly unwind in the Treasury bond market. And in that context, the last month has been rather worrying. It's been a bad month for Treasury bonds and their yields are now comfortably back up above 2%. What are we to make of this? Is this a natural development or is it something more alarming? With me now to discuss this, over today from New York for Goldman Sachs' annual uh, macro conference here in London is their chief economist, Jan Hatzius. Jan, thank you very much for joining me today. Very nice to be here. Let's start by taking a look at what's happened to um, the 10-year Treasury yield since the crisis, uh, along with uh, your own prediction at Goldman of where you think it's heading uh, from here. So y you're obviously expecting a relatively gentle but significant increase over the next couple of years. But what lies behind that forecast? What lies behind it is mainly gradual improvement in the economy. 2013 is still a fairly weak year. We think about 2% growth. Mm. But as we move our way through 2013 and the fiscal drag peaks either this quarter or next quarter, uh, I think we can look forward to stronger growth in 2014 uh, on the order of 3%. And I think naturally that's going to put some upward pressure on, uh, on longer term yields. Now what does that imply for your forecast for the Fed? Obviously QE, um, which is at its heart intervention in the bond market, has a lot to do with this. Are you therefore expecting the Fed to start tapering at some point in the we, next few months? We do expect them to uh, start tapering. Currently our baseline is December, the December FOMC meeting for, for a tapering announcement. Uh, I think it's possible that we might get that as early as September. Uh, I think it's also possible, depending on the, both the growth data and the inflation data, that it moves into 2014. But, uh, but I think that's sort of the, the range that we're, that we're looking at. And, and presumably, given your economic call, you're reckoning that that tapering, when it happens, will not cause any great adverse market reaction. That this is about, that, 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 that's about the correct timing for doing it. That's, um, that's right. We don't, we don't expect a, a great adverse mar market reaction. Of course, you could get turbulence. That's mm. definitely possible. But I think it's important to recognize that uh, to, to a significant degree, the long end of the uh, Treasury market is a policy instrument or at least a policy target. Mm. Uh, if there is too much turbulence, then policy is going to be adjusted. OK, now let's take a look at inflation. Uh, and just let's take through what, what we see with the, uh, the, the uh, red line here is Goldman's own measure of this. Is there any risk that we could move on the other side, that inflation will stay too low and that the Fed will actually need to step up its actions, something which is, isn't in market prices at the moment? I mean, it's possible that uh, inflation will continue to come down. And if we were to go s below 1% on a sustained basis, uh, not just for the personal consumption price index, but, but for a broader range of indicators, which are summarized in our core inflation tracker, Mm. Uh, that the Fed would want to do more. Uh, that's not our forecast. Uh, our forecast is stabilization and then a very, very gentle upturn in inflation uh, in 2014, uh, still below the target, but a little higher than, than it is now. But if, it were right. to, if inflation were to come down further, uh, it may be that they would push out the first date of tapering further into the future. Okay, and now finally, this is a very political subject, obviously, this subject of intense political debate in the, in the US. Are there any risks that a political accident could drive bond yields either higher or lower? And do you see any sign of them, the fabled bond vigilantes out there? Is there, is there any sign of worries about the deficit in the rise in, the, in bond yields? I think uh, on both of those fronts, uh, worries have come down quite a bit. On the mm. political side, uh, six months ago, you needed to see action to forestall a very large tightening yeah. of fiscal policy. If Congress did nothing, then you would have gotten a very, very bad outcome. Yeah. Uh, now, we're not in any position like that. Uh, if Congress does nothing, that's not ideal. There are lots of things that they probably ought to be doing. But mm. nothing really terrible happens if they, if they do nothing. You still get less fiscal drag in 2014 than in 2013, even, even if there are no changes in the legislation. Uh, and then on the, on the bond vigilante story, I, th I think it is important to look at the deficit numbers. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office now projects that by 2015, the deficit is going to be down to 2% of GDP. Uh, and the US is going to be running a significant uh, primary surplus on a cyclically adjusted basis. So I think a lot of the worries, even for those who would have been 
mm. concerned about uh, fiscal fiscal issues, and our own concern was always a little more subdued. But even people who would have been very concerned a couple of years ago should be much less concerned now. Jan, thank you very much indeed. It's very difficult, in conclusion, to uh, disagree with what Mr. Hatzius has just said. The picture that we're looking at at the moment isn't wildly exciting, but it is, broadly speaking, positive. There is no great reason to fear a major dislocation in either the bond or the equity markets if the current economic forecasts are correct.